Okay, so in this week's guitar lesson, we're gonna learn how to play this bluegrass chop rhythm style that's incredibly versatile and a lot of fun to play. And I don't want you to think about this as being limited to bluegrass. This is a kind of rhythm style that you can apply to just about anything. You could play this over a slow ballad, something up tempo. I'll give some examples of other ways you might uh, be able to play this as we get into it. But I find myself using this style of rhythm playing a lot when I'm jamming with other people. And it makes you kind of stand out as a rhythm player because you're doing three things at once. You're playing the bass part, you're playing the rhythm guitar part, and you're playing a percussive thing, sort of where the, the snare drum would fall. And you're doing all of that yourself, and, and you're, so you're covering all these bases, and it really sounds like very full, and, and it can uh, enhance the other musicians. And what I love about playing this style is I have so much fun playing uh, rhythm like this. And never discredit rhythm. We get caught up a lot of times as guitar players as trying to learn how to play lead and improvise lead. I do anyway. I spend a lot of my time there. But the most fun that I ever have is usually when I'm playing rhythm. That's the stuff that gets people up and dancing, or people, you know, tapping their foot or whatever, bobbing their head. It comes from your rhythm playing. And so uh, this style in particular is one that I'm very fond of because it'll do that more than any other style of rhythm playing because you're just covering all those bases. So in this lesson, we're going to cover uh, just the rhythm part, or in this video, we're going to cover the rhythm part. If you'd like to get the extra materials that come with this lesson, the MP3 jam track, which has the lead minus the rhythm, so you can practice uh, everything we're going to talk about in this video, or practice playing it, uh, the tablature for everything, and then I've also tabbed out the lead part for those interested in the little lead part that I played in the intro. Uh, that's available as well. So you can get those things by going to Active Melody. Com, go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP513. Okay, so the first thing we want to do to get into this rhythm is we're going to have to make a bar chord. Now I can hear a few groans out there because I know not everybody can make a bar chord or is a fan of a bar chord. If you don't know how to make a bar chord, I will give you an alternative. But it's a lot easier if you can do this with a bar chord. Now I'm making a G bar chord, I'm barring on the third fret, and these three fingers are making up the E shape from the cage system. And what we're gonna do after you make that bar chord is we're gonna start a series of downstrokes. By the way, everything we're gonna be playing here is all downstrokes. There's no upstrokes to, to deal with. That makes it a little easier in some ways, less variables. But we're gonna start on the sixth string, and then we're gonna play the fifth string. So we're going to start off only playing the bass part with downstrokes, and it happens on the beat. So when you're counting this in, you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is what I'm talking about. Just on the beat, sixth string, fifth string, sixth string, fifth string, just downstrokes. That's the bass line. Not a whole lot to it, right? Um, but we're going to fill in the space. So, so you've got those spaces in between the notes there. That's where the rhythm part's going to come in, and also the percussive part of this, a percussive element. So the chop chord, which you know a mandolin player or chop rhythm player on guitar, would happen on the and. So it's one and two and three. So in between. So it's like this one and two. So that's the next step, is getting to that level where you're playing the bass line, strumming the chord. Bass line, strum the chord. Just going back and forth. Take that really slow at first. You don't have to play this to, at any particular tempo. You're just trying to get the motion of it down, understand it. Now I know what's going to happen because I was there. Not that long, well, it's been a long time actually now, but I still remember it. Um, you're going to hit some of the notes you don't mean to when you're trying to do this. It's not going to always work out. That's just one of those things you have to keep doing. Just muscle memory will kick in and you'll be able to do it if you just keep practicing. I know that's like the, the, not the thing you maybe want to hear, but it's true. You just have to keep doing this, like, you know, almost to the point of insanity. So that's the first step, is just to get that. Now it's, it's sounding good, but it still doesn't have that percussive vibe. And what we want it to sound like is this. The bass is there, but listen to that rhythm. It's real choppy. You know, that's where that chop chord, the, the, the term comes from. So what happens is after, and you're really controlling all of that with your right hand. After you strum, you're muting. You're taking this part of your right hand and you're 
hitting the string. And so there's a little dance that happens with your right hand. And it, it, once you get the dance down, you can increase the tempo, you can slow it down. It feels so natural. You don't even have to think about it. Let me do this slowly. Watch this. See, I'm letting it ring out just for a second, then I'm muting it. So when you're learning how to do this, start off really slow. Just like this. You can go slower than that. Find something that's comfortable for you. Remember, it's all downstrokes, so you don't have to think about, is this an upstroke or none of that. It's just downstrokes, mute those strums though. You don't want them to ring out. Now, you can let them ring out. It's a different style and you use a different sort of um, different song. But for this song, we want it to be just like a, a choppy rhythm guitar or mandolin chord. Okay, so once you get that groove down, spend some time with it, um, we're gonna get move on to the next chords in this. So this is a, a, a bluegrass composition that's really just a one, four, five, uh, three chords. So our one chord, which we hang out on for a while, uh, is our G chord, and then it goes to the five chord, which is our D chord. But I'm playing a D7. I'm gonna show you a couple ways you can do this, but we're gonna start off by playing this D7. Now look at this. This is the first thing to do. Just look at my left hand. You've got your G chord and your D7. They're right in the same neighborhood. I keep going back to that because that's the key to improvising, lead, rhythm. You have to kind of stay in the zone that you're in. So that's our one chord, that's our five chord. It makes sense because it's right there. So, Here's what we're gonna do when we're playing the five chord. We're gonna switch up the order of the bass notes. So when we're playing the one chord, when we're using the E shape, I should say it this way, when you're using that E shape, it's the sixth string first, then the fifth string, right? When you go to the this shape, which would be like, that's like a C7 chord, you're just sliding it up, you're gonna start on the fifth string, and then go to the sixth string. But notice my ring finger, is going back and forth on that fifth fret. Fifth fret, fifth string, fifth fret, sixth string. So it, it sounds like this. So the one is on the fifth string this time. So that's the one little twist that might confuse you is when you're playing the rhythm on the one chord using this E shape, you start on the sixth string, but then when you go to this five chord, it's gonna be on the fifth string. Now remember when you're strumming this D7 chord in this position, you're only playing the middle four strings when you're strumming the chord. So strings five, four, three, and two. You're not hitting that open one string. Now this is incredibly versatile. Once you get this down, you'll use this all the time. It works in the blues. It works in different rhythms. It works in fast, slow, six, eight time, three, four time, four, four, eight, you can make it work in just about anything. All right, let me back up and play that intro part so you can hear those first two chords, how long you hold them, and what it looks like going between them. One, two, three. Okay, now you might have noticed when we go to that five chord, there was a little walk up there. This is what makes this style, is being able to play like a bass player. You're working in the little bass runs. So we're going here to this fifth fret, fifth string, but to get there, we're gonna start on the second fret, and we're gonna go second, third, fourth, fifth. Now sometimes I might use different fingerings when I'm playing this five chord. Sometimes I'll play it like this, just those three strings. And so I might finger it this way versus the way that I just showed you. Sometimes I might play it like this because I'm hitting four strings. It's really the, the heart of the whole thing is this, that little seven sound, that seven triad. But what we're doing is we're walking up to it. So try that. You can try it from different, different fingering. So that way I'm just walking ring finger up to my ring finger there, and then I'm in position, right? All right, so to count out how long to hold that one chord, we're gonna hold it six times. So we're gonna count it like this. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven. There's that seven gets us into that five chord. Seven, eight, and then we go back to the one chord here. So when we come back to that one chord, we play it two times. We go one, two, and then we go into the four chord. So what I did there, one, two, and then watch this, open fifth, middle finger on the second fret fifth string, and then we play our C chord. But I went ahead and threw my pinky in there to give it that C7 sound. Like that. It's the same thing we were just doing for the D chord, or for the D7. Exactly the same thing, we're just doing it two frets down. And why did I choose to do a seven chord there? Just to blues it up. That's the only reason. You can hear it. I could have done it this way. Just a proper C chord, that would be fine. But to throw in that little flat seven, you get the nice dominant bluesy sound. So that's why I did it. But, but before we got to the C, I walked up to it like that. Now I mentioned for those of you, I should have done this a minute ago. I said for those of you that don't play bar chords, I'll give you an alternative. Here's the alternative. Instead of playing the G like this, you can play your G the way you know it. The only difference is you're going to have to hit sixth string, fourth string. That's a lot harder than sixth string and fifth string because you're skipping a string in between. That's why I'm not a fan of doing it this way. Um, and plus it's too chimey. It chimes in. You, see, you can mute it, uh, but you don't have the control that you do uh, when you're playing it out of the bar chord. So that would be your alterna alternative uh, for those of you that don't do bar chords. So after we go to the four chord, then we walk it up to the five chord. Look at how easy that is. Think like a bass player. We're just gonna walk it up, third fret, fourth, slide up to the fifth fret on that uh, fifth string. Let that be your leading note. That fifth string is your leading note when you're playing out of these chord shapes. When you're playing out of that E shape, the sixth string is your leading note. Here we go. And then we go back to our one chord. And to reset it, I just did a little slide in there. See, there's my leading note. I'm sliding into that leading note, that root note, the G. So that's another way to do that. Here's another little alternative. You hear the bluegrass do, guys do that sometimes. It's just open, first, second, third. There's so many variations on this. But what you're really thinking about is you're thinking like a bass player. The, the rhythm chop part is almost, I don't wanna say it's irrelevant, but the percussive part of it isn't irrelevant, but the, the notes are, you, you, sometimes you don't even hear them. Listen to this. You're not even hearing any notes ring out for the rhythm part, just the bass. I'm just slapping it. So that just shows you how powerful that percussive element is when we're playing this style. Okay, so we're back to that one chord. We hold it the same amount of times. And then we go to the five chord. That time I didn't go like we did the first time. I just did the three four, five. So it, sometimes you might want to go and sometimes you might want to go. Either way works. It's just a timing thing. You got to kind of work it out. So the second time I went So then we come back to our one chord. Now watch this. Whoa, what just happened there? So, so it sounds complicated, right? It's super simple. It's one note. 
Um, even though it sounds like there's a lot going on because our ear is still hearing all those rhythm chords in between, I actually wasn't playing any chords. I was just hitting the strings. See? So I'm walking third fret, fifth fret, sixth fret, seventh fret, and then I go up to here. Now this time I did play the chord because I was able to be in position to play my C chord using the A shape. And then watch this. Just fill in the space with some muted strums until I get up to that seventh fret fifth string. And then I can go ahead and bar and hit that triad again. The same triad that's in your A shape. Now we're up into the G shape. That's all that is. Right? And then we can go to the five chord. Back to the one chord. Isn't that cool? I love that. And you know, I got that line off of a bass player. I was listening to an upright bass player and I hear that quite a bit in bluegrass jams. You'll hear him just walk it up and keep walking it up. It's a cool effect. And we go back to the one chord. Now, just to keep everyone on their toes, I threw in a key change. And I did that for a couple of reasons. One, to make the song sound more interesting, but more importantly, so that you can practice everything we're doing. We're not just limited to one position and thinking about everything in one shape. You need to be able to see this stuff in any key. So, once we go back to the one chord, we walked it up to the A chord. So now we're gonna be in the key of A. So I walked up to the six, or sorry, yeah, sixth string, fourth fret, and then up to the fifth fret. We're doing the same thing we did over the G chord. We're just up here now, barring on the the fifth fret. So we're playing an A chord. And we stay for the same amount of time. There's my five chord played exactly the same way we did down here. Now my five chord is an E seven, but it's I'm playing it the same way. And then I went back to my A and played. The same little walk up like we did before, right? No uh, chords were pl being played on the and beat, just muted strums. And then I went to the four chord down here. So I'm using that C7 shape. It's my D7 chord. We've already played this. Up to the E, E7. Then we go back to the one. And I actually concluded the song with this little final run. So that final run there goes from the one, we're gonna, we're gonna slide into this little box. Let me, I'll talk about this box in a minute here, but it's between the seventh fret and the ninth fret on the sixth string. And then we go seven, nine on the fifth string, all the way up to the seventh fret, fourth string. So we have, and then I threw in that, uh, that'll be an A13. Same as your A major bar chord, just take your pinky off, put it down on the seventh fret, second string you get that sound. Kind of a classic sounding chord. Doesn't really fit in bluegrass, but hey, why not? Um, so this little box here is really useful and it's something that I was gonna work in as I was going through this, uh, this rhythm part, but I didn't wanna overwhelm with too many ideas. So I just thought I'd throw it in here at the end of this video. Um, but when you're playing out of this shape, this E shape, where these two fingers are in your E shape, You've got a box between, the, in this case, in the key of A, between the seventh fret and the ninth fret on the sixth string, fifth string, and fourth string. So you can do things like this, watch this. Little fills, just like a bass player would. Little flat seven. Now that time I, I didn't stay in the box, I went up to the 10th fret, fifth string. There's the sixth of the chord. There's a flat seven. But you can get a lot of mileage out of that little box there. So take those chord shapes and play around with them. Now I realize we didn't work in any minor chords, but the same rules apply. It's the same for a minor chord. If you're using the A minor shape, you start in the fifth string and you're going between the fifth string and the sixth string out of that bar. Same thing if you're using the E minor shape. 
You start on the sixth string though, just like you did with the E major chord. So those are your two main bar, uh, uh, minor bar chords there, those two shapes. Um, but play around with that, uh, you know, I didn't really have a name for it. It's a boom chuck rhythm, I hear some people call that. I call it like the bluegrass chop style, but I use this all the time when I'm jamming with other people and I get a lot of mileage out of this. If it's a slow song, you can play it like that, a little slow ballad. Throw in those little walk-ups to, you know, different chords, the ones we talked about. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this. And remember, if you're a premium member, you have access to those extras. You get the tablature for everything. You get the MP3 jam track with the rhythm part. You can practice playing what we just talked about, playing that lead underneath it. And then also, uh, I've tabbed out the lead for those that are interested. All right, we'll see you next week for something new.